Dr. Tyler, please take a seat. I see that you've been with us for six months now. Uh, yes, I went through the whole FBI background investigation process. You went to medical school, but you're choosing not to practice? Uh, well, I was recruited out of UW Medical School. My parents see this as an act of rebellion, but I see the FBI as a place where I could distinguish myself. And I wanted to work for an organization whose mission is to protect and defend the United States against terrorists, foreign intelligence, threats, and to uphold and enforce the criminal laws of the United States, and to provide leadership, criminal justice services to federal, state, municipal, and international agencies and partners. Did you memorize the mission statement? Uh, uh, yes, the motto too, fidelity, bravery, and integrity. Are you familiar with an agent named James Hetfield? Yes, I am. How so? By reputation. He's a Seattle, educated, Seattle University educated criminologist who wrote a monograph on domestic terrorism and the occult who helped catch the Winchester brothers in 2008, generally thought of as the best analyst in the violent crime section. The reason you're here, Ms. Tyler, is that we want you to assist Hetfield on a case. Your background in the Seattle area should help. He has become obsessive. Agent Hetfield, I'm Dr. Rose Tyler. I'm here to work with you on the Watson case. I didn't realize I'd be working with a rookie. Well, if you have any questions about my qualifications or credentials... Yeah, um... You went to medical school at UW. Uh, yes. You got your undergrad in physics. A and? Uh, it's just that in my line of work, uh, the laws of physics rarely seem to apply. Can I get your medical opinion on this, though? Wisconsin female, age 21. No explainable cause of death. Autopsy shows nothing. Zip. There are, however, these marks. Can you ID these marks, Dr. Tyler? Um, I would say needle punctures, not an animal bite, but uh, maybe possibly electrocution. How's your chemistry? This was found in the skin tissue surrounding the wounds. Uh, it looks like it's organic. Possibly a synthetic protein. Beats me. I've never seen it before either. But it's showing up all over the country. Do you have any theories? I have plenty of theories. Well, this girl's dead, so obviously if it was something natural, then it must have happened post-mortem. Um, but if it was murder, then it's a possibility somebody could be tampering with the investigation. Uh, the answers are here. We just have to know where to look. That's why they put the eye in FBI. This must be the place. The autopsy reports of the last three victims showed no unidentified marks or tissue samples, but those reports were signed by a different medical examiner than our latest victim. That's good, Tyler. Better than you expected or better than you hoped? I'll let you know once we get past the easy part. What the hell is this? A federal investigation? They won't tell us anything. Now why would they, detective? In general, the FBI is a top-down organization that is organized very much like a military institution with a rigid chain of command and operating procedures. Due to the classified and sensitive nature of much of the information that the Bureau deals with, it can be a closed organization even to its employees. At the same time, there is a large focus on the sharing of information and training between agencies, and sometimes the public. The Bureau faces many issues, but much of it involves keeping information classified and, con and controlling its dissemination and transfer. This often results not only in leaks, but also varying, and therefore not always clear standard operating procedures. There is not necessarily a lot of uniformity in how each office handles certain situations because many of the situations change on a day-to-day -day basis. This can cause confusion, confusion both outside and inside of the agency. This should be our crime scene. 
Yeah, we don't have a clear TOD. We need to get the CSU in here right now. Not tonight. Air area belongs to the feds now. We'll be briefed at 7.30 a.m. Don't be late. It's ridiculous that the FBI just can't get any positive communication and intelligence with us. Don't go near this building. So what do we got? Deceased female, Jane Watson, 22, college student. And it looks like some of her organs were removed. Let's get these samples back to the lab. You got it. What are you guys doing? You know this is my office, right? Your lieutenant gave us access. Your office, all your case files on the Watson girl. And anything else you could hand over, that'd be really great. Looks like you got it all. Thanks. Do you think that the FBI will ever actually achieve its vision? Vision? What do you mean? It, we have uh, strategic shifts that describe changes the FBI needs to make in order to achieve its vision. A strategic strategy map that uh, shows the objectives necessary. A uh, scorecard measures success, informs uh, FBI leadership on the level and rate of success being made toward meeting objectives and initiatives that are put into place to generate momentum for positive change. That's not what I meant. I know about the strategic shifts which are reevaluated every year to ensure that uh, they still accurately reflect the FBI's strategic aims and efforts, and they align with the updates that are made to the Department of Justice of Office of the Director of National Intelligence Strategies. A plus work, Tyler. Do you have the talk screen on the Watson girl? Yeah, she tested negative for alcohol, heroin, and any drugs. And uh, for the most part, it was inconclusive. Okay, uh, what about uh, ammonium hydroxide? Um, that one was positive. It was on her hair, skin, and even on her lungs. Uh, what's it used for? Um, cleaning, flooring, and making bombs. Why would it be on a body? Um, it does the job. It explains why the rest of the talk screen was inconclusive. It sounds like this guy's a pro. What advanced analytical techniques are you going to use to help with the investigation? Um, systems such as CODIS and the and APHIS and the NIBN are used in like situations like this. Um, they're beneficial to serial murder investigations to draw links between cases, but I guess that doesn't really help you that much. I see. Well, thank you. Tyler, you could lighten up a little. How is it that you're the lead investigator on this team? Normally we have two to four investigators and including the crime analysis. I don't think it matters that much. Have you compiled a timeline on the victim? Uh, Any suspects? Uh, no, yeah, but I was going to go do that right you now. You know, I'm hungry. You want any food? Tyler, we have the victim's phone. The only prints on it are hers. I don't know what we can find, but maybe if we like to look through it.